Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. Before we get started, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a custom PCB manufacturer that can produce custom PCBs for any open source retro modding project. And if you're looking to create your own custom PCBs, PCBWay has fast turnaround time so you can quickly see if your design is working. They provide 3D printing services as well, so if you don't have a 3D printer, they've got you covered. They even provide CNC machining and injection Building services if you're looking to create a professional end product. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. You can find out more by visiting the link in the description below. First up this week is an update from Zwinergy. They've been working on these mini shields for the recent Time Sleuth adaptation for the Tang Nano 4K FPGA board. And when they say mini, they really mean it. The Tang Nano 4K board is this board in the back here, and the shield is this small board on the right. And what's interesting is the shield has space for both SMD or through-hole components. So if you want to use through-hole components, you can, or if you have the SMD components, you can use those instead. I also wanted to clarify something. Just because this says Tang Nano 4K, that does not mean that this is going to be a 4K time sleuth. 4K is some kind of a reference to I don't know how much space is on the FPGA or something, not that it can support 4K resolution. And according to Zwinergy in my Discord, this version of the Time Sleuth can only support up to 1080i at 60fps, whereas the older version of the Time Sleuth could support 1080p. But this version is going to be a lot cheaper, so there is a little bit of a trade-off. And it looks like Zwinergy is finished with the design, so expect the Gerbers to be released in a few days now. Next, we have a really cool project related to the Pico Station. The Pico Station is an open source PlayStation 1 ODE or optical drive emulator. The Pico Station is going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico, kind of like an open source X station. We have this post from X Rider, which looks like it is a PCB mount for the Pico Station. So on one side here, I guess it's the top side that you'll see in the actual PlayStation when it's all buttoned up. And then the underside is where you would mount the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you look at the images here, the top side of the PCB here has a micro SD card slot. It looks like some kind of maybe an activity LED over here, uh, ironically placed where the laser would be on a real PlayStation 1 drive. Here's what it would look like when the PlayStation is all buttoned up. And here's where you could see the Raspberry Pi Pico soldered onto the bottom of the Delta station. There's a forum post on Delta Island about this project. And what's interesting is it says that this hardware is 100% compatible with the Pico Station project. So I'm assuming that this is going to be kind of custom hardware around the Pico Station project and not necessarily compatible with the original developer's hardware. By that, I just mean you could use the Pico Station software with this hardware and that should work. Hopefully that makes sense. There's some more pictures of the hardware here on the forum post and there's even some pictures of the QSB, which is the other part that will have to get soldered onto the PlayStation 1 itself and then you use some kind of a flat flex cable to go over to the PCB at the top of the PlayStation. I don't see any Gerber files for this project yet, but I think it will be open source just like the original Pico Station project was. Next, we have a quick update from Oleg Endo about the Sega Nomad Venus Sub 2020 boards that they're working on. It looks like they have been doing a full redesign of this project. This project is a replacement PCB for the Sega Nomad. They mentioned that it's almost a full redesign, so I'm curious how much they had to change over the original version. There's also a picture of the screen mounted on the other side. So this is kind of a PCB replacement mixed with a LCD replacement. And apparently because of the placement of this LCD screen on the new board, it allows for a bigger battery, so more battery life. They hope that this is the last major board revision of this Venus Sub 2020 board. So hopefully there are going to be some available for sale pretty soon. Next, we have an update from Greg from LaserBear. They have some of the new Retro Fighters GameCube controllers, and they're trying just to confirm if it's going to work with their GameCube internal Blue Retro mod. That internal Blue Retro mod features wired controller detection. So if you have a wireless controller going and you plug a wired controller in, it will move the wireless controller to the next port. Anyways, it looks like those new Retro Fighters controllers don't trigger the wired controller detection. I guess those ports use the ground connection between the controller and the port to detect if a controller is plugged in. The Retro Fighters controllers do not ground the shield in the receiver part that you plug into the GameCube. However, LaserBear has a small mod that you can do on the inside of the receiver for those controllers where you connect the metal from the shield to a ground pin on the PCB inside of the receiver. These pictures aren't 100% clear as far as where you need to solder them, but maybe if you have one of these controllers and you wanna do this mod and you take apart the receiver, this might help you to know where you have to bridge a 
wire from this pad on the shield here to a ground point on the PCB. I guess I'm a little bit disappointed in Retro Fighters for not considering this and grounding that shield there. These blue retro projects that have been implementing wire control detection using the shield have been around for a while now. However, I understand that the Retro Fighters controllers have also probably been in development for a long time. I'm not really sure how common it is to ground the shield in modern controllers anyways, but hopefully Retro Fighters can do that in the future for any new controllers that they come out with. Next, we have a quick availability update from Dan, aka Citrus3000PSI, one of the members of the PixelFX team, about when some of their kits are going to be available. It looks like the N64 Digital is held up in production. The Fab is trying to source a small FFC connector for the RGB. But in China, they're currently celebrating the Lunar New Year, so that is going to take them a few weeks for them to get back to Dan here. They mentioned that their goal is to get a bunch of their kits available by Q2 of this year. So the N64 Digital, the DC Digital, PlayStation 1, and the PlayStation 2 Digital. And there's an update on the Infinity Switch. It looks like they're ready to go to production to create a small batch of units to do some more testing. They're still hoping to bring the GC Loader back, and they're going to do some small production testing for that mod. And speaking of mods that are being held up by Lunar New Year, this is Make Megahertz's Project Stellar update. You can read this blog post if you want to, but it's basically the same thing. China is celebrating Lunar New Year now. The Stellar mod chips got caught up in production, and now they have to wait for the holiday to be over before they can start the production again. It sounds like they're confident that by the end of February, they'll be able to mail out those Project Stellar kits. And for the big story this week, even though Project Stellar is caught up in production, Make Megahertz has decided to release this Make Megahertz 2023 roadmap. This roadmap is a plan of all the mods that Make Megahertz is going to be working on this year, starting with the Project Stellar development, which we just talked about. But this roadmap shows that there's going to be a bunch of add-ons for Project Stellar. So the first one is going to be a front panel LCD screen add-on. Then there's going to be a wireless controller add-on, which is really interesting. I wonder if that will be integration of something like OGX360, or maybe this is a brand new wireless add-on for the Project Stellar. There's also going to be a 256 megabyte RAM add-on. So as far as I know, there's really only the 128 megabyte RAM sort of mod that you can do. So I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in how that's gonna be possible and what things you can do with that. And there's also unannounced add-ons. So I'm not really sure what that means, but I think there's a lot of Project Stellar add-ons and different development that's gonna be happening this year. Now we can get into the really interesting stuff. Alongside the add-on releases for Project Stellar, we have this blue line that says unannounced products. So I'm not really sure what that's going to mean. Obviously they don't really give you any hints here about what that means but I think it's probably something that they are already been working on since it looks like it's going to be happening toward the beginning of quarter two. I'm not really sure, but if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And I've saved the best for last. The last thing here on the roadmap is Retro HD Plus, which is going to be coming toward the end of this year. So there's listed here Retro HD Plus PlayStation, Retro HD Plus Dreamcast, Retro HD Plus, that's kind of hard to say, Retro HD Plus N64. So it sounds like those are going to be HDMI mods for the PlayStation 1, the Dreamcast, and the N64. I think a lot of people at this point are going to be saying, do we really need more HDMI mods for these consoles? And I 100% think that we do. Not necessarily like we need another mod. It is good experience for these mod developers to work on as many consoles as they can, especially the older sort of analog systems. I think most of these are actually digital, but you know what I mean, that older era. The more experience that these developers get with different consoles, the better, in my opinion. Not just that, but friendly competition is good, so that means that prices will hopefully be in check, and hopefully one of these mods, one of these HDMI mods, is gonna be available if you want to purchase it and they're not just gonna all go out of stock. So huge news from Make Megahertz. I can't wait to hear more about this Retro HD Plus and all of the Project Stellar add-ons. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you wanna learn about the best analog video connector. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.